and I'm a 60 year old who's been practicing as a physician for about three decades now. So my specialty is health and performance optimization and who in the world would be better at determining what really improves people than a physician who specializes in that. And I got about 10 years of experience, almost, well, really 13 years of experience working with, with people to improve their, uh, improve their health and their performance. So visceral fat, belly fat is critically important. It's probably going to be the single, one of the top, if not the top, most important thing that you're going to learn in your lifetime. Yeah. So first there's a little bit of confusion about what is belly fat because um, most people's idea of belly fat is when they grab their, their fat in their abdomen like this. But that's really not the fat that is as detrimental and harmful that we're going to be talking about today, which is visceral fat. And visceral fat means around, it's fat around the viscera or your organs. So really, it's fat deep in your abdomen. <clears throat> and in fact, it's invisible. Unless you get an MRI or a CT scan, you cannot see deep belly fat or visceral fat. So maybe what we should do right at the outset, I like to show people uh, in the audience where visceral fat is and what it looks like. In many cases, it's their first chance, first uh, experiencing it. So we're going to do a scan. I'm going to show an MRI uh, through a human being in what's called the transverse or axial plane. So it's basically a slice, you know, through through your abdomen like this, and it creates this image. It's kind of like a pizza. It's a uh, image unaltered, and on an MRI, fat shows up as white, and muscle and organs show up as dark and so does bone. But what we're gonna get into is not all fat is the same in the human body, even though you might think it is and all your life you thought it is. But let me set it up this way. The difference between the different types of fat is like bricks and clouds. One improves you and protects you from disease. The other one causes disease. I mean, they're completely opposite. Yeah. So where is visceral fat? It's this white stuff in your abdomen. The white stuff on the outside in the periphery is the pinch, uh, the inch type of fat, you know, what you grab hold of in your belly, that kind of fat. That is called subcutaneous fat sub just below cutaneous the skin so we painted in this image up here yellow and visceral fat we paint up here in red but these are the muscles they're called the obliques this is your six pack if you ever wanted to see what your six know what your six pack look like in an mri scan that's it and these are the psoas muscles that makes up your core if you do a core workout surrounding your vertebral uh uh, body which is your your spinal column your bones in your back and these are your your muscles in your back called your rectus spinae muscles and those are really important because they keep your spine erect so if you're somebody who looks at old people who walk around like this and you don't want to look like that then you don't want these muscles to fall apart and what causes it to fall apart? What well, we're going to be talking about today, this deep belly fat, visceral fat, because it causes visceral fat to be deposited into your musculature, and then your muscles don't work good. And it's not just you get a crooked spine. You can't really use your muscles, even to the point that you cannot get out of a chair without help. And eventually you can't get out of a chair and you're stuck in a, in a bed and wearing diapers so nobody wants to end up like that but so many people do because they don't pay attention to what's happening inside the body so the most important thing you need to pay attention to when it comes to your health is your visceral fat because if you can eliminate that you can eliminate chronic disease yeah so almost any chronic you can just go on google chronic disease 
and you'll see its association or causality from visceral fat. So any of you want to wrap? Heart attacks, strokes, colon cancer, rectal cancer, prostate cancer, any cancer, uh, bursitis, tendonitis, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, obesity, type 1, 2, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, on and on and on and on. So, yeah, every form of chronic disease in 6,000 people, can you imagine how many there were, got better or went away? Yeah. So you can go to your primary care physician, whoever your physician is, and uh, enjoin them, ex ex exhort them, beg them, plead with them to get an MRI. They'll be uncomfortable with it because uh, they don't read visceral fat. They'll be confused with it. No, but no physician likes to order a test that they don't understand. So how do you get around that problem? Because uh, that is going to be a obstacle. So you tell that physician, him or her, that you're going to pay for it yourself. Uh, I, nobody should say no to me. I want to get healthy. If you're saying no to me, you tell me why you're keeping me from getting healthy. If uh, What reasonable objection would you have if I'm paying for this? So if you got a doctor after you say explain that to them and they want to order it, time for a new doctor. Go get another doctor that is interested in your health, not somebody that is uncomfortable because you're on your study that they've never been trained on. And here's the presumption by most physicians, I'd say all physicians. If something, a patient, and even you probably had this, patient brings something to a physician that they didn't learn in medical school, the presumption is it's not important, unless it's a brand new discovery. So they're going to automatically assume that visceral fat is an important. But assuming that you can get them to order it, the next obstacle you have is who in the world is going to read it? Because if no doctors are trained at medical school, what physicians are trained in it to read? And the answer is nobody. We we had to learn ourselves in, in our research practice how to read visceral fat. But I'm going to tell you, because you're here, okay? So the real quick way to read visceral fat is when it comes to an abdominal scan, you want to be mostly dark and not a lot of white. So this scan in the top, mostly dark, they're oval shape. The oval shape went away and your admin started to pooge out. Why? Because you started getting this white stuff in here that's invisible, that nobody told you about, that you have to target and specifically get rid of. So that's a, a real quick, fast way of reading your own MRI scan because your doctor isn't going to be able to read it. If you were a bodybuilder and you're working to get yourself this, these great big muscles and your six pack abs, that's for competition. That's for a certain look, but that's not for health. You might think you're doing a healthy thing because you're way better. You know, you imagine yourself as a way healthier than other people, but then why do bodybuilders fall apart? And they end up having heart attacks and strokes. And it's large part because they're accumulating this stuff inside and they're eliminating this stuff right here. So what you want to do is be more like the Tarzan build. But the point is, if you get a scan and you're filled with this visceral fat and you don't have any problems, you know why? Because you just got it recently. It hasn't been around for you. But for many people, it starts when you're a kid with waffles, pancakes, syrup, pizza, spaghetti, and over a period of time, sedentary behavior, not exercising correctly, being stressed out, alcohol, or sleep, accumulates over a period of time, and more critically, it, it causes this inflammation throughout your body. So the reverse is also true. Let's say you got no visceral fat, and we open you up, and we dump a bunch of visceral fat in you. You probably got five, 10 years a pretty good living, even with this big belly full of fat, because that inflammation slowly gets out and causes this chronic disease. But for most people listening today, they've got a few decades of visceral fat inside of them. If they've been eating carbohydrates and processed foods and, and uh, drinking alcohol, it just it's that a combination, trickle, 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 
all of that inflammation from that visceral fat, from that visceral fat accumulating over a period of time that causes that problem. So, and I, and I got all this visceral fat. It's because that means you just recently accumulated. Why? Could be stress. You know, you get a stressful thing. You get a sick kid. You you're stressed out. You you get fired from your job. Your company's you know going down. You you know you lose your business. Whatever. You start accumulating visceral fat. Or you know you just suddenly go crazy on strawberry shortcake. You know, and you 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 just go off in the deep end eating pizza and donuts or whatever. And you've been thin your whole life, and now suddenly you gained all that weight. We scan people for the National Science Foundation as young as four years of age and could identify visceral fat inside of them. And consistently for the four-year-old and the 90-year-old, the amount of visceral fat correlated to their lifestyle, what they ate, a lot of processed foods, carbohydrates, sweet things, bread, pasta, rice, muffins, cookies, candies, cakes, um, pizza, uh, tortillas, those things cause visceral fat. What doesn't? A diet eating meat. And we also saw if you ate vegetables, you had low visceral fat, but the uh, amount of visceral fat being eliminated was accelerated when the vegetables were stopped and the individual just ate meat. In this particular image uh, on the on the right up here, this guy is filled with visceral fat, all that white stuff inside of him. He's a CEO of a company and he was running 15 miles a week, 10 miles a day, five days a week. So he said, stop running because distance running, distance exercise, chronic exercise actually produces visceral fat and makes it makes it more tenacious. So even if you eliminate carbohydrates, it makes it harder to get rid of that visceral fat. So we have all our people stop and then we have them substitute in sprinting. This guy was doing all of the interventions. He cut out carbohydrates and he still had all this visceral fat. And we said, are you running? And he said, yeah, I'm still running. I might stop it and start sprinting. And then look at the dramatic change in him. And it was only, it was less than two months. So this guy eliminates almost all his visceral fat in less than two months. And he gets a six pack just by sprinting. So sprinting is, fantastically optimizing. How much? The very best form of exercise a human being can do is springing. Nothing is harder in a shorter period of time. You go out and you do a max effort sprint for 30 seconds, you will see how tired and exhausting it is. You go lift weights for 30 seconds, you're not going to be that tired. But when you sprint, all your muscles are used. You create a huge oxygen debt. You create all of this carbon dioxide buildup, dropping your pH. It's the maximal physiological challenge you can do in a human being uh, in the shortest period of time is sprinting. But that's me, that's why you get the greatest benefit. So before engaging in sprinting activity, you should discuss your health situation with your physician, okay? So go and let them assess your, I have no idea what condition you are. Maybe you have uh, stress fractures, or maybe you have a fracture, or maybe you have a torn meniscus in your knee, and you should not be sprinting. So go and find out what your condition is and able to sprint. But if you are overweight, that in and of itself is not a reason not to sprint. You know, it's time to sprint. And so if you have a contraindication, a true contraindication, you cannot sprint, you can consider a variety of other ways. So I tell people, sprint, swim get into a pool and just swim as fast as you can. It's not a complete replacement. It's not a perfect replacement because nothing replaces perfection. The highest level, best form of exercise is sprinting. But it's, it comes fairly close, close enough to say, go do it if you can't sprint. And maybe, you know, you can also sprint, run in a pool, go in four, four feet of water, five feet, three feet, play around with it and sprint in that water, you want to have as much joint impact and yet you'll get resistance. And that's a good good form to do that. And also a stationary bike, dialing up against resistance and sprinting against resistance on a stationary bike. But eventually most people will optimize their health good enough to get back to conventional sprinting. And when you do, you don't have to do a 20 second sprint the first time. You can just do a three second sprint. But let me give you a public service announcement. 
people are tearing their muscles, straining their muscles right and left, jumping into sprinting. And the reason is you're filled with visceral fat and your muscles and your tendons have fallen apart and you have no idea. There's so much schwitz in that pipe and the disease process in your muscles that when you go and accelerate thinking you're at the Olympics and you're gonna just rip one out there, uh, you, you end up ripping your muscles. And so what you can do to avoid that from happening is slowly accelerate. Every injury I have heard so far on followers on the internet, people you know reporting strains from sprinting is in the acceleration phase. They simply accelerate too much and they can't pick up that they're injuring, you know, that nature tries to warn you, ah, it's starting to hurt, it feels a little awkward, little bit. back down, okay? You're too diseased, you can't handle it. Uh, but I will say this, um, don't let that moment go and say, oh, well, I'm just too diseased. No, I want you to think about this. Yeah, so nothing burns more fat and nothing puts on more muscle than sprinting. In a study where they looked at the 10 most popular forms of exercise, uh, and producing uh, myokines and black feed, these messaging molecules that say one, burn fat and build muscle, not just in the muscles you're engaged in, but all over your body, these messaging molecules go to. The number one form of exercise at the top of the list, sprinting. Second one down, resistance training, lifting weights. At the very bottom, run, jog the poorest producer of molecules to, to message burning fat and build muscle. Now, does it uh, come as any surprise that after people, you know, have been running for decades, they're scrawny, they have no muscle growth, they have the opposite, they have atrophied muscles? No, that's what happens. Here's, here's something to ponder if you haven't thought about this. AI just recently found if you have myosteatosis, AI shows that as bad as it is to be obese and your lifespan is not long if you're obese. I mean, you get also cancers and heart attacks. I mean, you, you see all those people, the more obese they are, the earlier they die. You know, those poor, my 600 pound life, you know, you're always reading about these people dying in the 30s and 40s. So, you know, not many of them make it you don't see an obese 80 year old because they get knocked off in their 50s. So obesity is really bad. But do you know what's double? Double the risk of death than obesity? We step right here. And you can have it when you're thin. If you have a small abdomen and you walk around, I'm a runner and I don't have any fat. You can have that visceral fat. I call it invisible obesity inside you and you don't know it and it's in your in your your leg muscles too so that's why you got to do these MRIs to take a look and 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 see what's going on so um, that's really important study and you can see it also in um, in the forms of uh, old, older people so look at their legs this this is 74 year old and 40 year old and this is a 74 year old look at the difference which which leg do you think you want you want the the 74 year old with the big muscles and no fat in there, and I'll allow this to be seen a little bit better. So hopefully this comes into view. And you can see in this scan here, there's a lot of redness in here. Uh, 35 weeks later, boy, that shape has changed now. Instead of being a, a blob, you know, where they look like a barrel, now they sort of look like a college swimmer. The interesting thing is, never did any swim. They know to do any sports. They didn't exercise one minute. Well, what the heck did they do to reduce their visceral fat that much? So they got rid of fat in their muscle. They got rid of their visceral fat. They didn't exercise one minute. What the heck did they do? Quick, tell me. They cut out carbohydrates. They cut out processed foods and they ate meat and vegetables. They ate clean. So the first thing you gotta do is stop eating garbage processed food, highly palatable, tasty food. Eat meat and vegetables. Now, I'm a carnivore doctor. I recommend just eating meat. It's what I've seen eliminates this stuff even faster than eating meat and vegetables. First rule is cut out those processed foods, cut out um, carbohydrates, eat meat 
And uh, if you're gonna eat vegetables, eat you know vegetables in complex, clean form, so you're not not eating a highly palatable uh, processed um, vegetables like rice and things.